Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, BMB Flyer here. In this video, I'm going to show you some different ways that you can try to tackle the large canopy areas on mechs like the Battlemaster or the Griffin. Here's a previous example of a Battlemaster I painted before, this Battle Droids version with a large canopy area. You can see the red transition to black, and then I left most of the top surface a darker color, not trying to color the entire area. In most of my paint jobs, I like to gloss over the canopy area. I like the natural reflection of the light in the room or at your desk or wherever you might be. If that's not your style, not a problem. You can always add white reflection spots. You can see here on this painted example of this current Battlemaster, I've done a similar technique as with the red. I've gone bright on one edge and worked all the way over to black and on the other side, even though I glossed the canopy, I still added some small white reflection dots. So you get a little bit of a unique and somewhat interesting look no matter what conditions of light you're in. Here's a unique example done by Captain Ned on this out of print Griffin. You can see he's got a bit of a split reflection, nice and stylized to kind of show just a center light reflecting and he's done basically twice the transitions to the darks. So if you can do a transition from dark to light one way, all you do is continue it the opposite direction working back to the dark. For our example, I want to talk a little bit about where do you start. And before you start picking up the brushes and paints, take a look at your model. I've got a little bit of a charcoal paint on the canopy already. It's not pure black. But as you can see from my desk lamp, there's already a reflection of the light showing where the highest or brightest colors would be. It follows from the top and goes down and then tapers off. As I rotate the model, I could have that be more off to one side or the other. So before you start, determine where you want that reflection to be if you want to do just a one side transition left to right, or if you want to do a bit of a split and you maybe even have that off center one way or another. I recommend you try this out, take a picture with your phone and then look at it so you have a reference point. Because you see this angle here, I like how it doesn't quite go all the way up to the top. Whereas if I turn it more, now I've got more of a over the top type of reflection. For our canopy here in this demonstration, I'm going to be using Rust Brown, Troll Slayer Orange, and Flash Gets Yellow. This will get us a nice orange style reflection to contrast with the blue. Again, the base color I used once before, Heavy Charcoal by Vallejo. It's the extra opaque. I really like this. When you add a little bit of water and thin it, you still get a good amount of coverage. You can, the brush I'll be using today is a double zero from Monument Hobbies Creature Caster. They used to be known as Slow Fuse Gaming. That's why mine says that. It's a Kalinsky Sable. I'm using palette paper, which is for oils and watercolors and things like that. You can use any non-porous surface, even a paper plate with wax coating. Or if you want to use a wet palette, it's a good idea since we'll be glazing. I've got my colors on the palette. I've added a little bit of water to each one, and I've got some water off to the side as well to add in. If you hadn't already, I would use this charcoal to block in my base color for my canopy. After that, I'm going to go over here and grab some of the rust brown or reddish brown I'm going to trail it out and then I'm going to start to thin and get a glaze. You can use glaze medium if you wish. I just tend to use water for things like this. And I'm going off to one side for my light being right here. So I'm going to pull the paint so that when my brush lifts off the surface of the model, the highest concentration of pigment will be where I want the brightest light. And I'll continue to do that with my consecutive colors. Your water, your water should be used frequently to thin down your paint. When you're glazing, you're not trying to change a lot very quickly. You're just trying to change a little bit very slowly. You can see as it dries, it's going to mute out and you'll also be able to see some of the areas where you'll need to go back and do another touch up in between as you can see it's not very smooth but from the top part portion to the second area where I started there's some shadows in between there from the black underneath 
Now since I'm going to do both sides and not go completely across the model's canopy, I'm going to start approximately in the middle here and pull back towards that bright point that I'm trying to achieve. If you go too far, don't worry, you've got your charcoal paint, let it dry, and then you can do the exact opposite and glaze over the red-brown with your charcoal and fix your mistake. And as you can see, there's already a difference between the two layers that I've done on my right and the layer I just laid down, which is drying, so I know I'll need to get a second one. You can bring it down further if you wish, have a little bit more variation or a wider surface area. If you try to make it too small at first, you might struggle with getting the transitions over a limited surface area. I'm just convincing the paint where I want it to go. I'm also trying to stay away just outside of where the dark band around the canopy reinforcement is, just because I like having that little extra shadow there. I'm going to let that particular panel dry and work on the next two and then we'll move and then I'll uh, touch it up again. This layer doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. As you're looking over it, try to again reinforce the areas where you know you're going to have another layer be brighter which is more towards the middle. The outlying areas are easier to touch up because you're going to go between your red brown and your charcoal or your black. I've left just a small area down here at the bottom where there'd be the least amount of light based on when I was looking at it with my reflection from my desk lamp. And I'm also only going to go up about half as far on the second layer on this upper canopy area so that it doesn't get too bright so that I can kind of show some transition. And I may come back and throw a little bit of charcoal over that to break that line up a little more and show it didn't quite reflect as high. As you load your brush and deload your brush with water, either a paper towel or even just use a piece of paper, this is construction paper, to wick away the water that can completely saturate your bristles. Because as you're painting with the glaze, if you go and put that down and it capillary action takes all the water along with that paint, you're going to have too much water on the surface of your miniature. You can see this red brown really starts to rust brown, excuse me, starts to have a nice orange appearance to it already, even without adding an actual orange, pure orange color. I'm using very light brush pressure, lots of water. Now I want to start fixing some of the areas I want a little darker. I'm just going to add some water to my brush. I'm not even really taking the old rust brown off because I'm going to work with that color anyway and a little bit excess in the areas I'm working won't be noticed if anything it'll help add a little bit of transition between the two colors. So now I'm focusing on that line between the two and pulling in the opposite direction. Again, very light brush pressure, not using a whole lot of paint. This will help me define that outer edge area from dark to whichever color it is that you might choose. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a back and forth. You may not get exactly what you want on the first try. It happens to me all the time. And like I said, if you go a little too far or want to go a little further, it's really just a process of restarting from your base color and working back through the same steps. This is how I get those nice smooth gradients that people always ask me about. It's really about less paint and more patience. Once you get a few of these under your belt, you'll find it starts to come much more easily. I think I'm happy with that for the first color. Let's move on to actual orange. If you don't think you're gonna be working as quickly or that your paints might dry out, you don't have to have all your paints on the palette. I just like to do it because I will use 
combinations of loading my brush with the adjacent color to help with some of those transitions. That's why I have them all out. The process is the same, but now I'm not going near my blended edge so I don't disrupt those colors. If you were just doing a corner, you wouldn't have to pull in the opposite direction. The reason I do like using water most of the time is that it does dry faster, so I don't have to wait as long between layers. If you live in a drier climate, like desert or like Arizona or something like that, or high in the mountains where there's not a lot of moisture in the air and your paint's drying out, I do recommend you use a medium because you do need to have time to at least work the paint a little bit on the model. Glaze medium and some of those other uh, retarders and slow dries will require you to be more patient between your layers, but the opposite of that being that you can't blend as well if your paint's drying out, it's just something you'll have to feel out as also going to depend on the type of paint and whatever additives might be in that as well. It's very situation dependent. You see the light still reflecting off of the wet surface there, but it's pretty much where I want it to be. I'm waiting for it to dry completely to look and see if there's any areas I want to give just a little bit more orange to reinforce before we go to yellow. Now I'm not trying to make this a yellow canopy. I want to do orange with a highlight and yellow will look nice and smooth since it's paired on the color wheel. So now I'm keeping a narrow edge. Again, not using a whole lot of paint. I'm almost, almost stippling this area. And I'm going to turn around and do the opposite direction. Yellow being a difficult color to put over others since it's a light colored pigment. It's definitely going to need more. And I think I want to move a little more over to this side. I want a slightly off center highlight. So I'm just going to go a little wider. It's going to look rough the first couple layers most likely, but that's all right. Take your time, be patient. I'm going to clean my brush out a little more here so that I don't have any orange building up into it like it was earlier. Again, it wasn't a bad thing while I was transitioning to orange, but now I just want this pure yellow. Again, not because I want super strong pure yellow, I just want the coverage over the underlying color. You'll notice I didn't have any white on my palette. I'm not planning on using any white on this particular blend. You're free to do so if you wish, of course, or if to add small uh, reflection spots out on the outer corners of the canopy that you're working on. Get some orange and I'm gonna go even thinner than when I was trying to actually build up the paint. So I'm looking at almost dirty paint water is what I would call it. And now I'm going to put this right on the line between where I have the strong yellow and where I have the lesser orange and rust red, rust brown. And you can go back and forth on this tons of times. You need to just find a spot when you're happy and stop. It's never going to be 100% smooth into everything else. It'll look good, but if you if you look for areas that you're not happy with or that you don't think you're going to be happy with, you'll find them. So it's one of those, once you get to about 90%, you're probably really at 100%. You can end up all day long going back and forth on some of these. I see a little bit of a dark spot here, so I'm just going to come in and reinforce that as well. You can also deload your brush from paint and switch to just a little bit of water, especially if you've still got a somewhat damp layer and just push some of the water around and thin on the surface. 
again this can get that can get kind of difficult depending on the shape of the surface you're working on and again the, the paints and things like that but just wanted to point that out there's the finished model I know the glare from the desk lamp is gonna obscure some of that so here's a photograph of the finished piece I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your questions or comments below. Subscribe. Join us over at Facebook on Battletech Camo Specs Online. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.